Another way to control a 3D object in 3D space is to use the widget tool. So let me show you how to do that by going to Working Files, going to Photoshop Projects, and opening up Move Widget. We've got our familiar wine bottle here. We're going to start by working with that. Switch over to the Move tool by pressing the V key. When I do that, it turns on the cage around the object and also displays the widget right there. If you don't see the widget, just go up to View, Show, and then make sure that 3D selection is checked. That's where a widget is. Turn it off, widget's gone. Look over here and bring it back. Show and 3D selection, there you go. The widget is three axes, X, Y, and Z, and the RGB, the red, green, and blue, matches the X, Y, Z. If you just remember that the colors of a computer screen are red, green, and blue, then you can kind of remember how the three coordinates work here in the widget, red, green, and blue, RGB, X, Y, Z. So the three axes here, there's red, that's the X axis, and then here's the Y, goes up and down, and the Z is coming right at you there. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, and there are three elements to each one of these axes, and sometimes it's hard to see all three of the elements. So I'll just show you how they work here, though. I'll start off by taking a look at the X axis. If I hover over it, notice how the cursor changes. This is a context-sensitive tool here. No matter what I've got selected up here, if I hover over here, it changes to the kind of cursor that'll work inside this. I need to click on it to make it active, but there you go. So even though that's selected there, when I get inside here and click to make it active again, then you can see that we are going to move the x-axis like that. One of the good things about this tool is that they work on only one axis at a time for the most part, and that makes it easier to control things sometimes. So here's the x-axis moving there. If I go in here, this little box right there is the scale on the x-axis. So I can scale it, make it really wide, just on the x-axis here. So then what's this one in the middle? This is the rotation tool, but it's not rotating around the x-axis, it's rotating around the y-axis. This is y up and down here. So when we rotate, we're rotating here, but not on the x-axis, we're rotating on the one that goes through the x-axis, the one that's perpendicular to the x-axis, which in this case is y. So I hover there, I can rotate around the y-axis like that. Now you can see all three of the axes there. So take a look at the y, why we can move it up or down. When we rotate here, we're rotating on one that's perpendicular to it here. In this case, it's going to be the z-axis. Now we're rotating around the middle like that. And here's the scale on the y. It's stubby, tall. Same thing with z now. We can move it along like that, pull it towards you, push it away, scale it just on the z-axis, or we rotate it on, guess what? Perpendicular to the z is the x. Rotating the x makes us bring it forward like that. Finally, this thing in the middle is the Scale Uniformly option. These guys scale in each one of the axes, right? The one in the middle scales uniformly. Push it in, makes it larger. Pull it back, makes it smaller. Sometimes the widget can be just a bit too large when you're working on something small, or it might not be large enough. You can change the size of the widget by holding down the Shift key and then dragging on the Scale Uniform button there in the middle, making it larger or smaller like that. It's a pretty straightforward tool, but let's see how things work when you have a 3D model that has multiple meshes. Turn off the wine bottle here. Go down and get this globe. And we're going to put it in the background here like that. The globe comes to us from Turbo Squid, from an artist there. Let me show you that artist's page. Artist's name is Frank E.R. Scuto. This is his only work of art at this particular point in time. It's a beautiful work of art. It's a beautiful model. And it's priced at only a dollar. And when the folks at Turbo Squid saw that, they blanched. They said, even though he's a brand new guy, we've got to charge more for this. So maybe by the time you look at this, it'll no longer be a dollar. But in any case, this is this gentleman's work of art here, his model, this lovely globe. Go back to Photoshop now. I want to position this globe here in this room, in this image provided to us by Photospin. Right now, it looks like it's kind of tipped back on the back leg there. I want to rotate it a little bit toward us. So I'm going to select the globe here, click on it. That'll display its 3D elements here. And you can see it has multiple meshes. Each one of these guys is a mesh. It's like a garbage can, but it's actually a mesh. I need to select all of them to move this as a unit, so I go to the Meshes view here. There are all eight meshes there. Click on the first, shift click on the last, and now I've got this cage around all eight of those guys at once. Now if I hover over this thing in the middle there, it says the Z-axis. That really should be the Y-axis, right? But strange things happen when you bring in models sometimes, and the names change, but at least you know that's pointing up and down. So if I lift up and down, it'll go that way. I want to rotate it toward me, and I need to rotate on the x-axis there. So to rotate on the x-axis, I go back up to here, and there is the rotation thing right there. And I pull it toward me, and I can rotate there on the x-axis like so. Now I want to kind of position it maybe a little bit better. I want to kind of push it back a little bit. So this guy right there, 
it says Y, but it's going to behave like Z. I'll push it back like so. There you go. And you can watch the shadow there at the bottom, right down there. I'm going to lift it up and see where the shadow actually gets down. It touches the floor and sort of stops. Right about there is where things kind of line up if you watch the shadow hit the floor. Now what about rotating just the globe? I need to click away for that to deselect it. Go back to the mesh view here and click just on the globe. I can rotate the globe. So how do I do that? I want to rotate here on the up and down axis. It's called Z here, but we want to rotate on the Y view. So that means I got to go down here and find the one that goes perpendicular to it, which is right there. Now sometimes when you play with models, weird things happen, especially when they're made by somebody new to the business. So look what happens when we click on this rotation tool. It jumps up in size. But all is not lost. We can just scale it down by clicking and scaling it uniformly. Just pull it back like that, bring it back inside. Right like so. So it fits nicely. And now the next time we rotate it, it won't jump out like that. It'll behave this time. And this little change here, you know, it looks like it's going to be static when you're done. But one of the cool things about Photoshop these days is that you can also animate these things. You can make videos out of these rotations or out of any other kind of 3D move that you want to make. We're going to talk about animating 3D moves later on in the course. Now there is a way that you can apparently select all of the meshes. If you go back over here, click on scene, notice that you get a box around here. It looks like a cage, it looks like the real cage. But weird things happen when you select scene. You're not really moving the object, you're moving the scene. So if I rotate here, it's not going to rotate really around this center point. It's going to rotate around some unknown vertex kind of off up here. It won't behave the way you expect it to. And once you start playing with the scene like this, it's pretty hard to get it back to where you started. So even though it's tempting to use the scene over here because you get the cage going around the entire object, this actually isn't the object that's really moving, it's the entire scene that's moving, which can be a little confusing. So you're better off to go over here to the meshes side of things, select all of them, and then use them as a unit rather than use scene as a unit. So there you go. That's how you use the widget to control a 3D object here in 3D space.